guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and today we are doing a show on painting and palette knives. Useful, unique techniques, tricks, and tips. Um, along with showing some different kind of sets of palette knives that can give you a lot of really cool, fun options uh, over just, you know, your regular traditional painting or palette knife. So, uh, so this should be an interesting show. Um, today we're going to be using Soho acrylic paints with that, which is a heavy bodied acrylic paint. Using that because we got it in the jars, so this will be a lot easier to scoop and dab and, and dip and play. Um, I don't think we need a, 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 any palette paper for this, do you? It's just, Not when you put the exact down. On you know what, it might be good to use uh, to show some of the ones that are specifically designed for mixing. Um, but um, we will, uh, next week on our episode for, um, for color and composition, at the end of it, we're going to be giving a shout out to all the people who have been donating artwork to a charity that I fund called Kids First Incorporated. We've had some really, really awesome viewers who have not only sent them artwork there, but they've sent some to me to send or drop them off locally. Uh, to take down to the charity for their event May 3rd. So if you've donated, uh, please private message me and let me know so uh, you can be credited next week uh, at the end of that show for the shout out. And a couple of the ones that have been dropped off to me, one of them is amazing by a middle school boy that's just, it's very profound and really awesome. And uh, I think that kid's headed for, for big things, but we'll, we'll actually show that next week because I was very touched not only touched by the donation that there's a kid that cares about other kids, but just the topic of the artwork that he's doing itself. So um, this show, if you're playing along at home, is JL96. What that means to you is if you want to see what any of these items are that we're actually going to be showing on the show, you're going to want to go to jerrysartorama.com. If you haven't uh, opened that document or the teacher's cart already ahead of time, which seems like some people are getting all sneaky and doing that now. Uh, but you'll go to our website, you'll type in JL96 in the search bar, just hit search, that'll pull up the list of all the supplies so you can see about any of the things that we are showing here today. Um, I think we're going to go over them really quick just so we can kind of see what they're all about before we get started. Um, the first product that will, or we'll, the, one of the products that we'll be showing uh, this is the Creative Mark Painter's Edge XL Palette Knife Set. Um, this set comes with a stand. Um, it's hardwood. I have dropped this, I don't know how many times, so it's a little wiggly. I didn't get a chance to tighten it back down. But it's got this set of uh, multiple painting knives and one palette knife. What's the difference between painting and palette knives? We'll talk about that here in a few minutes, but we will use these so you can kind of see what they're like um, in action. Obviously for not a six by six inch painting. <laughs> I mean, you, you could use it, it'd just be one fell swoop. And, um, right here, uh, we've got, if you can turn on the overhead, Katie. I'm sorry, they're like spread out, so rather than, yeah. awesome, thank you. Uh, we've got the Creative Effects, FX Effects palette knives. They've got all sorts of cool and interesting heads uh, that can create lots of different texture do some fun things. We'll preview those here while we're kind of working. We've got three great big canvases that we'll show that on. Um, this set is the Creative Mark Painter's Edge Studio Palette Knives set of eight with case. Um, apparently these have been very popular on the sale that they had on them recently, Katie, because now they're not in stock. However, this is the set of eight. There's actually multiple sets of five that are less and that don't have the case, which I don't know how many painters are on the go. I mean, maybe if you're taking classes or a workshop or something, you may need to carry your palette knives with you, but I, I'd never seen anybody carry them in a, in a case. That's yeah. It's a kind of a new cool thing, but, um, but you Girl. can get those sets mixed um, just in sets of five, and they're like uh, 1890 or 1869 for a set of five. So you can kind of pick and choose the heads that you get. This set... Um, is all these specific ones, but all these are, are in different sets. So if you see something you like, and they're sold individually, 
um, which I'll make sure to, when I go to use the different ones, they've got a number on them. I'll make sure to, to point that number out so that you can actually, if you see that and can't live without it, you can find it on the website. Um, so we'll be using those. Again, we're going to use Soho Heavy Body Acrylics with that. Uh, we'll do a little bit of stuff with just a black artist masking tape. You can put that down to do kind of, you know, space something out, put some stuff on with your knife, and then pull that back up while the paint's wet to keep a nice sharp edge. Um, and then I'm going to use Soho wipes and just paper towels for cleaning those off. I didn't put that on the list, but that's easy enough to find um, just to uh, kind of keep those palette knives clean. Uh, when we do work on the canvas, we are using the Paramount Pro Professional Heavy Duty Canvases because they're nice and sturdy and I didn't feel like we'd be, it's, since it's such a heavy fabric, pushing and pulling on it, it flat it. with, yeah, not all of them would be able to handle that flat, but this definitely will. And it's just easier to show and demo it flat. So, um, so let's talk about these real quick before we start going on them. There's actually definitions for these folks, and, and you know me, and how I like my definitions. Frida, I'm not sure if she was like, yes, or was like, yes. <laughs> Probably some of both. Yeah. Um, all right, so tool definitions. Palette knives, painting knives. We're going to hold this one because this has all the parts. This right here, this beautiful little bend, is called the crank. I don't know either, Katie. I was just like, okay. That it seems, you know, odd. Maybe because the old fashioned cranks where it would have the kind of it goes up yeah. and you crank like that. Uh, maybe the bends are, you know, I know in some brands, I mean like this, the bend is more severe than this. See, mm -hmm. with that texture. Uh, all that is for is for actually keeping your hand out of the paint when you're either painting with it, you're mixing, you're working with it. If this is flat, my hand's up out of the paint. This one with a, a you know, more severe bend, even with my big fat man hands, Katie, that keeps them out of the paint. That's okay. We all know it's true because they've seen them <laughs> in demos. <laughs> um, the blade. Obviously, that's the metal portion of it, or if it's plastic, that's just that surface that you're going to be working on. Um, they will be flexible or semi-flexible. Some of these bigger ones are going to be even more firm, but that's because it's a very large knife. Uh, there's different shapes. There's more rounded. We got that one. We've got more of a pear shape, right? Uh, there are diamond shapes like this one, uh, travels, etc. ad infinitum. There's all sorts of different shapes. If, if they could come up with something creative that makes it so you can lay down the paint well or mix with it, they're probably going to have a shape for it. And I know with the, I don't even know how many, it's like 25 or 30 different ones of the creative mark. It's, well, you don't, you yes, you don't, you, they're, other than making your own really strange one, it's a, and, and these go take that and go beyond it. So it's it's there should be a shape that will work for what you specifically are looking for. Um, they're called palette knives. They're called painting knives. They are not designed to cut though. You can use them for scraping. Not to say that Katie and I both haven't been guilty of opening some boxes around here with them, right? Or getting a little knife cut when I reached in a drawer and I wasn't expecting Yes, one. I, I don't know how many times I've done yeah. that. So um, we'll see if we can get through this episode without me needing a bandage. Heck, I've cut myself on pencil sharpeners, yeah. right, in videos. So it's entirely possible. Um, why use knives for painting uh, instead of brushes? I mean, I, up, not, I guess up until I've started doing the show, I would have said I would only use palette knives for mixing. I would not use them for painting. After doing a lot of different interesting things on this show through the couple of years we've done it, I absolutely now more see the allure and actually have used it to spread and some paint. so much easier to clean. That's very true. That's That was going to be my next point, <laughs> is if you're, if you're kind of crazy about the brush hygiene, as it were, of your painting brushes, these things will make you so happy because it's either clean or it's not. Mm -hmm. um, 
think about brushes. Even if you've got something that's super soft and super fine, unless you're glazing, most strokes with any type of brushes, stiff or soft, tend to leave a brush stroke, especially if you're working in heavy body paints, right? The, the fluid body, that's not gonna be a problem, but heavy body paints always leave that brush stroke. And yes, you may use a filbert where flat or bright or round, but you're still going to see some of that kind of bristle pattern in there. That can start getting really boring in a painting, texture-wise, especially if you're working thicker. It, it just starts, um, sometimes it can kind of bore the viewer, I guess, would be a good way of, of saying it. So uh, this is a great way to add impasto texture without that brushwork um, and actually easily kind of scrape back and remove, almost sculpt paint in areas that you can do with the brush up to a point, but it's still gonna leave that texture, right? Um, so with these, you can have the smooth flat ones or you can have the crazy texture that's not going to look at all like a brush. So it gives you so many different types of options. Um, painting knife, palette knife, what is the difference? Now, with these, we say that these are palette knives. These are actually some are painting knives, some are palette knives. Amanda, you want to take a guess as to which is which? No. <laughs> I will surely get it wrong. Amanda, Amanda has chosen not to participate. <laughs> YouTube viewers, now you can harass her. No, I'm just kidding. No, okay. Facebook. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Well, you know what? They can harass her remotely, I guess, yeah. even. Um, okay, so palette knives. When we've got that bend, that crank, think of it this way. If there's a crank, it's a painting knife. If there is no crank and it's flat, it is a palette knife. What are palette knives used for? Officer, officer. What are palette knives used for? Scraping your palette. Scraping your palette or mixing color, okay? You won't see a whole lot of crazy shapes in a palette knife because you need to, that short motion of the pushing, okay? Like when you're, steel. and scrape, Smear, scrape, smear as you're, and this is my favorite one, and Mikey's too, which it looks like this updated version is more rounded and it makes me sad. See how it's like a little round there compared yeah. to the ones we've had in the past? We've had some shorter ones in the past. This one can mix a lot, okay? So easy to scrape. This one, especially super effective. This is my palette knife cleaner. I put some of the lavender essence down, let it yeah. set a little while and go whoosh. Pulls it right off even really dried oil paint off a wood palette, which is amazingly easy to do with that. So, so of this group, knowing that, which one would be the palette knife? The only one that doesn't have a crank. It's the Mac Daddy version. That looks um, dangerous. <laughs> it's, it's a little sharp and I like it. <laughs> it's like, I mean, that, that, listen to that satisfying sound. Yeah, you could do some damage. You wouldn't need a cleaver if somebody broke into the house. Just whoa. yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of the easy way to figure that. So just remember, if there's a crank, it's for painting. If there's not, it's a palette knife. Technicalities. All right. So um, the painting knives are, or the palette knives are going to be a very flexible blade. By the way. Um, I mean, look how much flex you've got to that, right? Because you want that bend to be there to kind of push the color, the two colors together. A painting knife is going to have some flex, but less. The longer the blade or the narrower the blade, the little bit more flex you're gonna get. But one like this, you've just got a little bit of flex, okay? Because you want that to be able to lay stuff down without flexing so much that it smears and spreads that paint out as you're using it to make strokes. All right. Now, uh, how to differentiate knife performance from different shapes. A shorter blade is going to help execute much more kind of controllable angular strokes. All right. Longer blades are easier to put down or place big sweeps of color like this one. It's like frosting a cake, right? Frida, when you saw this, what did you think? Look at look at the cupcake people are like, ah! Katie and I just talked yeah. about that. You can do a whole It's layer you could Okay, we're gonna take this in a minute and we're gonna use that across the whole canvas and see 
how much flat, nice, smooth color you can get where you don't see that canvas texture. This is a beast for that. I definitely used that to cut a cake when I was at the store one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It became a permanent kitchen tool. Yeah, yeah. But. I'm telling you. So, so those long blades like this, the longer blades like this, okay, those are going to be good at, you know, obviously this would be for your large scale canvases, probably not your like four by four. Size it down, but that's perfect for that type of an application. Um, the rounded blades are good for building layers or dabbing spots of pigment. This is one of my favorite shapes. I just love this little thing. I don't know if you can see there, see it on my shirt. That's much easier to see. It's just such a fun little shape. I like that guy for encaustics. Oh yes. yeah. And, and I have one like in my office and I've gotten multiple ones at home just because I love it so much. It's just the happy little tool. Also, it looks like the thing that the dentist gets in your mouth. It does, wow. where, where they, the where they, mirror. with the mirror, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not quite that shiny. All right, um, so good for dabbing spots of pigment and all that. Now, for being able to do scraping effects, right? Something small with a nice, a little bit kind of sharper point, but some rounded, you can really scrape back if you add wet pigment over dry pigment, which we'll try that in a little bit. Some of these little blades like this are perfect for that type of usage. Scrape them back into it. So we'll do some of that. Um, all right. Now, if you're going to buy a palette knife, what do you want to look for? You want to look for something with a flexible blade that's got some spring and bounce to it, right? Um, all the ones we've got have got that in spades. They are designed very well for that. You want the narrower blade, the more bend you're going to get, remember. Wider the blade, less. Okay, the handle should look smooth and comfortable. Now these, granted, are a little bit beefier and bulkier, but the way they've been designed with this kind of little thing in the middle really helps grip. It all, it's like naturally where you would be putting those fingers, right? Right in between. So it's still very easy to hold even though it's larger. Yeah. Um, these have a nice smooth handle. They're made in the same place, so they've got those same nice, really easy to grip handles. So when you're holding the knife like you should, it's going to be really easy to hold on to. Um, you want to look for a firm attachment to the handle. I've seen places where it just goes into the handle. There's no kind of that little, almost a ferrule. You want that on there. That's going to give you a nice firm grip. It's going to be cemented together really nicely. Okay? All right. So... I like how on the ones that are hanging, you can see that the blades go in like a kitchen knife and yeah. have the, the yes. rivets going Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's, especially for when you're using really big mm -hmm. areas of color, we're going to be really pressing or you've got... It gets heavy. Yes, it does. Well, and just, and just if you're using a lot of force against a very large canvas, it's just a really handy tool. Usually, I mean, it's only on the fancy kitchen knives that you get those yeah. riveted through. So, and you've got that on this, and this is nowhere near that weight and heft, and you're not going to be doing that, you know, pressure, but it's still made, it's still over-engineered for performance, so you're not going to break it, okay? And the blade comes up in it to here, so it's actually bolted into that blade. Okay. All right, so, um, so techniques. We're going to talk about them real quick and then we'll show them while we work with each of, we'll try each of these knives and see what kind of each one does. Just so you know, for, for if you're something you're looking at, kind of what shapes you like with what types of things. Uh, there's a technique where you're going to be buttering like bread. Obviously that big kind of cake frosting one is going to be the Mac Daddy for that. Some of these other big ones that look like big kind of flat trowels or, you know, for gardening are going to work really well for that. Um, you're going to want a long or a very big wide blade for doing that. Uh, something with a small tip, perfect for dotting things, right? You dip it in your paint, you put down some little dots or just kind of a little highlight. Those are going to work really nicely for that. Um, pressing, you can create textures by pressing the knife into the surface where you've already spread some wet paint, either by making ridges or kind of curving that out. Um, edge for fine lines, you can take any of the ones that have an edge, and your palette knives are really still handy for that. Even though they're flat, right, where for mixing they're going to be fine because your hand's up out of the way, but they don't have that crank, 
If you turn it outside and you can pull it, it'll make some nice clean lines. Um, and even for doing more of the scrapito techniques where you're going to be scratching in, those would work well as well. For those of our viewers who aren't familiar with the term the graffito, do you want to define that real quick? It means scratching or scraping to reveal layers of an underpainting. Where you've got one color already on there, we'll show that in just a little bit. But where you actually, you apply your paint and then you scratch back into it to let that kind of be revealed and kind of peek through. All right. Um, real quick, how to clean palette knives. It's always better when they're wet. I, I don't know how many people's studios I go into and you see the stuff just caked on where it, that stuff can pick up, especially if you're doing oil and you put that back into a little bit of solvent or just there's enough solvent in kind of what you're mixing together where it wets it enough and it's not completely oxidized, it can transfer color. You don't want that to happen. Um, and not to mention that it does build up texture. When I inherited some from my grandmother, I left them as is and decided not to use them because they were very pretty, but they were not functional unless I scraped all that off. So you don't want that texture from the dried kind of lumpy paint on there because it's not going to give you kind of that clean stroke that you might be looking for. Uh, wipe it off with a cloth or something like your Soho wipes first, then give it one more wipe with a paper towel or even like a soft cloth like old t-shirts. That will just ensure that clean is ultra clean before you stick it back in the paint. All right, with dried paint, you can use a razor blade on its side to kind of scrape it off. You can even use your handy dandy your palette knife, right? That will work at scraping that back off as well. Um, and you can even clean it kind of any of the little kind of residual stuff with solvent on a rag. Um, remember, cleaning as you work requires less elbow grease later. Right? Okay. So let's take some of these knives and let's have some fun. All right. I'm going to move these out of the way. Uh, over here, and then we'll kind of go through them and keep them in order. So as I go back through, people know which is which for sure. All right. We are going to start with the great big knives, because I think that would be more fun. What do you think, Katie? Sounds good to me. Okay, so we're going to go with just a plain canvas for this. All right, now I have pre kind of opened these jars so we'd just be able to. That's smart. <laughs> well, just because sometimes if it's acrylic and these have been around for forever, they're still nice and fresh inside Katie. I opened them up and was like, fresh paint. I like those jars. I do too. Fresh paint. All right. Oh, this smells so good. Yes, I haven't painted acrylic in a while, so it's oh, no. that familiar smell of home studio. Can you talk about why some of the paints are good? Or talk about them. Somebody wants to know, like about the paint. They're yeah, they're the a use. they're a very good value. Okay, they're kind of a great um, kind of artist grade acrylic that is going to have a little less saturation of pigment over some of like the really expensive brands um but it's got great resin so it produces a really nice shine when it's dry uh it's got a great heavy body more like the golden heavy body and stuff like that mm -hmm. but it's at an affordable price now they don't have cadmiums cobalts any of the stuff that's in it that tends to make the paint more expensive that's why they can do it at a lower price because they've taken out all that anytime you've got professional quality paints or higher pigment loads where you're trying to keep it still a value for something, you're going to rob from Peter to pay Paul as a manufacturer when you price it. Meaning if it's a one price only, that means the more expensive pigments, the cost is kind of being absorbed by the cheaper ones, right? If that makes any sense. So with, with this, it's not, they take out all those higher end pigments so you don't have to deal with it. So and just watch and see. And we've done some acrylics episodes. If um, at the top of this episode, there should be a pin that will take you to the document that's got all of our episodes that we've done. We've done multiple episodes on acrylic. 
-hmm. So, and we've talked about all the different brands and shown them. So that will give you a way to kind of see what it's like in comparison with other brands. I have to say with those, I feel like every time we've tested them, you've been surprised at how good they are considering the price point. Oh yeah, no, I agree. If I was gonna paint, if I was gonna paint large scale, this would be everything for yeah. the background up until like yep. as I was bringing the painting up in greater detail, just because the coverage and stuff can't be beat with it. Um, they're nice bright pigments. Um, they may not be as, um, they might tend to be a little more semi-transparent than maybe, you know, something that I was going to use that was a professional quality one. But that's why I would use that as the background and then just come back over it with a little bit of the other thing because yeah. that saves money, right? And they dried really well. Right. They dry well. They're made out of very quality resins and stuff like that. So, all right. So let's try the big cake spreader first. I'll set these down off the things so we know what we've tried. All right, so this type of blade, if you put the overhead on, I'll kind of make sure that I've got this where we can it's see. It's in the middle because it's freaking out you. It's like, help me, help me. Okay. There you go. All right. And I think that we need to do some pink. Magenta. All right, so I'm just going to scoop this out. <laughs> and this is what... See how heavy that is? This is why. Huh? Oh, I said, you know, the viewers want hot pink. Yep. Well, or copper, but we don't have copper in the Soho. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now see, look how much that just, that bl one blob, how much I've been able to coat this with. The fact that I want to eat that. I was going to say, it looks like spreading buttercream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cake. It feels like that, actually, Frida. All right, so I just have that little bit left, and look at how much area that I've been able to, even off the off the thing, you can't see the bottom edge of this. It's still way off the, the chart with that. That gives you that ability to cover a large canvas with a very smooth texture in no time. Imagine if you were sitting and doing this with a brush, how long that would have just taken to get a nice thick coat on there, right? Right, Frida? I just did some party decorations for my niece and I was up for like nine hours coating these things. Yeah. And they were each the size of one of those boards. Yep. So see, look what would have benefited you. Shame on you. Now you know. The more you know. Okay. So I'm just going to put those over there. Now some of these ones, obviously this has a nice point to it, right? What were the points for? Reductive what are you laughing about, Amanda? We'll come back to that. She's probably laughing at me. Yeah. She's All right. Usually laughing I'm, at me. I'm going to use this the big, the big kind of fat one, and we're going to put Ooh. a little bit more on to see what this does versus that long pole, right? I want to see some of this bright orange. Okay. See, big big blob. Oh, you can you can take that and push, and lift it up and make some cool smushy things. Or just, you can use that because it's that rounded on top. Look at that. That's fun. How about that? Oh, wow. That shows up really cool with the overhead and with the shine. <laughs> I like that color. It's like kind of like a creamsicle. All right. Would so, you ever apply gesso with those? Uh, the thing is with gesso, guys, gesso is a primer that's meant to be absorbent. It's meant to be painted on in thin coats so that it stays flexible, so that it absorbs your paint. A lot of times there's marble dust and things like that in it. So in acrylic gesso, sorry, it's the, it made a ringing sound. If you're going to apply it with this, you might have cracking problems because suddenly you're making it stucco thick when it's not designed to be, right? You're supposed to do thin coats and sand. If you've got texture with gesso, you're not supposed to apply like this. What about acrylic mediums? Acrylic mediums, yes. All the way, you can do acrylic mediums. All right, so let's see. This one has a fun little tooth. Let's put something over the pink and pull it across. Oh, that's nice and fun. And this is just straight out of the jar, right? Straight out of the jar. Yep. See how that has like little little teeth marks? 
That's pretty fun. I want to keep wiping it on my <laughs> on my apron. Okay, so that gives you that kind of nice little scrapey texture, or you could even, if you're careful, because the points are sharp, you could even put it on its side and use it as a spreader. Kind of like that first one. All right, another one of that's, that's kind of that trowel shape. You should be able to put this on, but also draw with the tip, right? Green. All right. All right, so let's put this up here. Oops, and of course it's right where the thing is, so let's do that. Ta-da, okay. So you can use that to kind of spread like the other ones, or you can use that to kind of go back in and find some of the stuff, right? I hope they can hear the noise. I hope so too, can they? Ask them if they can. It's very, sounds like a sword fight. Shing, shing. All right. Then we've got this one, which clearly is used for mixing. So if I took this, oh wow, that's cool. Look how the color stuck to the bottom. So you could use that for scraping back to something where whatever color is in this gesso, see how this is absorbent and it's absorbed that pigment and stuck on there even though I'm scraping it? That's for mixing, clearly. But you can also apply with it. It makes a nice, smooth application. Or you can take it and pull back through it if you want. I'm sorry for those of you who have misophonia. You might be watching the wrong episode. <laughs> so see how that's pretty cool, right? All right, so we got the one left that's good for kind of using the points. Now, clearly, because this one had the, you know, is more for mixing and scraping your palette, this one's going to have kind of the ability to keep your hand up out of stuff, but you can also draw in it. You can scrape. You can apply. We can go back in. Apply some red in there. Ooh, it, put it, it puts it on really nice and smooth with that kind of a flatter. Um, obviously, that one great big flat one can make the most flat area without, like, a lot of stroke, but that still works pretty well, doesn't it? So these are these giant ones. This is what you can do with them. You could really, I mean, you could put this on and hold some great, I don't want to mess that one area up. I mean, you could use that to build up some peaks and valleys if you wanted with that harder edge. Um, you know, lay in some kind of sculptural effects without having to necessarily use like a heavy gel medium or something like that. This will take a little while longer possibly to dry with the heavy gel medium, but uh, imagine what these would be able to do if you use some like heavy gel or glass beads or, um, you know, the um, paste where you can really get that super heavy texture in it. You could do a whole lot of things with those that a brush is just not going to do, right? Okay. Now to put and this you somewhere. Can do all of that with it. oil too. With yes. No, with yeah. oils and with oils, you can even add the um, like the painting butter or you know the um, alkyd mediums that are the super heavy body that'll make that oil dry a lot faster. Because you wouldn't want to do this with just straight oils and leave that much texture. That's a lot of dry time. Right. So you'd want to put like an alkyd medium, and maybe okay. So we're just gonna start with red on this one. And, okay, go ahead and pan and we'll see where this, where this is going to end up. Oh, yay. That's good. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit. That works. Yay. Cool. All right. So, slide that over a little. All right. So, with these, obviously, this is, this is the set that we've got that's just kind of the, the set of eight. This one is... The T23 blade, but for some reason on the website, you would need to put 23T in to get it to come up. Thankfully, I searched, and then I was like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. 
So um, we're gonna put some yellow on with this to see kind of how nice that big blade works. And we can get just like that big, that big kind of buttering spatula. If I work real slow, I can kind of feel where that drag is to know kind of where to where to fix it, where it's going along. See how that's got a nice big, or I can take that tip and draw back into it, okay? So it makes some nice big smooth areas. Um, you know, if you were working on a much smaller canvas, this would make some fantastic. Now this is not, this isn't, these kind of glops are not this blade's fault. It's that there's a little bit of, when I opened it, some dried stuff, crust from the lid fell in there. All right, so that one is the 23T. All right, now, use the Soho to wipe these off before I switch to the next one. Um, does anybody have any questions while we're doing this? Yeah, once you do all the texture and stuff, would you then be able to create a subject on top of all that, or do you want to do that? Like no, you could do that. I've done I've done stuff where I've taken paper. A friend threw away a canvas in when I had a studio in Raleigh, in the dumpster, and she had put paper doilies all over it with soft gel, and then decided she didn't like it. Right. And I liked the patterning of it, and I took it out, and I painted a zebra over it, because zebra's got nice linear stripes, right? Over the weird rounded doily shapes, and it ended up looking really cool. So by that, you could do any amount of texture you wanted, and then do something even very realistic on top of it. But just keep in mind that sometimes, especially if you're glazing and stuff, that texture can come back to bite you in the butt a little bit. So just think about it. All right. Here's the next kind of smaller, uh, almost kind of like pear-shaped spatula. This is a 10T, if you're gonna look it up. Now this one obviously is a little smaller. It doesn't give you quite as much pull, but you can get, there's a big chunk of dried stuff in there. Let me get that out. That can give you a nice, and especially if you use kind of the the butt end down here by the crank, you can use that to kind of push and feel kind of that nice. It takes just a little bit of practice and notice how I'm holding it. I'm holding it more like a sculpture tool than a paintbrush, right? I'm not holding this like this. This is not gonna work. That crank is made to with your fingers to be held under it, not your whole hand like this. So you're gonna want to hold it like this either like this or like this, okay? Where that's gonna keep those hands from getting on there, but it's still gonna give you kind of your whole hand to kind of use those fingers to move that tool, okay? So that's kind of that spatula shape. That's kind of the pear spatula shape. I'm just throwing these up here so I know what's been used and what hasn't. Okay, here's one of our palette knives, right? We can still use that to scrape paint across, right? See how that's scratched back down to that red and you can see it through? That's a type of scraffito technique. Sorry for the misophonia, people. Run away. See how that goes back down to that nice ground underneath and you can see it peeking through? Almost put that back in the orange, that would have been bad. Yes. A little. Oh, I see. See how that nice kind of scratch goes right in under there? You can see I'm going to turn it on its side and pull this kind of one little pointed spot. See, while the acrylic is wet, you can actually remove it really easily. So if you're working, and the nice thing about this is this works so much fat you're working so much faster than you would if you had a paintbrush with it, right? So it's not going to dry up as fast because you're putting these nice kind of thick areas on uh, so it kind of gives you a lot more play time and options as a result okay obviously this one is your one that is your palette knife as opposed to your paint knife where you're going to be able to pick stuff off you make a mistake take one of these and that'll pick it right back up obviously if i turn my hand like this i'm not going to have a lot of 
help, right? Because that's going to get all gloppy. So this probably would be better for either having your hand up at an angle, maybe making some texture, running it through. Okay, not kind of that nice, smooth, you know, look of that kind of pretty knife. I love the feel of that. It's very, it's like my own art for relaxation. All right. That one was uh, the 61S. All right, 29T, it's kind of more of that kind of diamond shape, right? Or trowel shape. Obviously, it's not going to pick up as much, but you can use it to build texture, kind of to big, make some nicer peaks there. Oh, and of course, that's right up in the, ta-da, there we go. Would you say that the metal knives are better than the plastic ones? The plastic ones, um, depending on the brand and, and the make of the plastic, are not going to give you as much flex, and it's kind of like eating with a plastic fork as a opposed to a metal fork. The metal fork, it's not bending and twisting and moving all around like a plastic fork. This is still gonna give you a nice bend and flex, but you can control it much easier, if that makes any sense, right? Bend and flex, but much more controllable. I don't like plastic ni uh, painting knives other than for just mixing paint, because even then, I don't feel like I'm really, with each kind of push as I pick up and mix paint, like that you can really get up under there and mix it well enough. So see the trowel can, you can push, you can make, you know, use it kind of more of once you've got that body on, you can kind of push it around and direct it because you've got those nice edges. And if you want it to be really flat and just kind of place some average color on there. Look how different that magenta looks on, on the red, yeah. Red. Exactly. All right, well, let's just do something really scary and add some green then with the next one. We'll push this up and add it a little bit over here. Okay. All right, let's break out my favorite one, the 35T. All right, and with this little guy, you can just kind of pat on nice little shapes. You can kind of make almost... The shape that the thing is. See how you can get a little bit more control with that? You can almost use it to stamp with. You can use it to kind of push down and lift. Please. Yeah, I mean, if you're working on a super huge canvas, these would be small. But you can really direct with it. It's got such a nice, you can kind of apply some too if you want to, you know kind of loose random color and kind of get a little bit of that scratched in red showing underneath. You know, that'll still work pretty well for pushing paint around or kind of commanding it. You can use it to kind of pull back through. That's a really nice line. Look at that from that little, let's do it at an angle. So LA was wondering, if you put in, with this paint, if you put in peaks, are they going to soften as it dries? It's going to shrink back just a touch, but it's not going to be. If you're wanting to put super big peaks in, you may want to go ahead and add, like paste is going to give you the highest peaks. Look back at some of our acrylic mediums episodes uh, that we did. I'm not sure. I think they were in 2017 probably, weren't they, Katie? It's been a while. Um, Look back at some of those episodes. We go over gels, we go over heavy gels, we go over pastes. Pastes are gonna give you the biggest well, we have rise. Examples of each one of them on there too, yep. so you can really see what they do. Yes, doing. yeah, we did a whole board with everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna do the one T. It's the little teeny tiny one. Um, we're gonna go into that yellow there. And we're just gonna add some little dots with the tip. See the little tiny dot? See how nice that, look how little they are. And they're actually pretty, as long as you kind of wipe off the excess, they're pretty consistent. 
I say that and then do absolutely the opposite. But see how that's just nice? You can do almost a little drawing. You can lay some color down without really having to make a big smear, but still got enough side motion to it where you can cover some area with it if you want. I mean, look, that's not that bad for that being such a small tip. You can, to be able to get that much detail out of it and then to actually lay a little bit of color down, that's not too shabby. All right, I grew impatient of using the wipes. Now I'm just wiping it away. Apron again. Why are we surprised, Katie? Not surprised at all. Nope. Surprised it's surprised. Yep, exactly. All right, this is another one I really like a lot. 36T. See that little pretty shiny blade? You can use that for leaves and stuff, Katie. I was going to say, it looks like a daisy petal. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You can use it for that type of stuff. Oops. Always kind of check the ed edges for the excess. Or you can just, you can actually, it doesn't, it's not got as long as a pull of a pull because it's a very small amount of area. Let's see, you can apply some, right? Fly some back through here. Ooh, that pushes color up that's bigger up out of the way. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. Look at that. Where the stuff mixed with that silver. Pretty. You guys can't see it as much here. Have to yeah. the background. Uh-huh. Okay. So that is the, all of those, that set of eight, right? Which is a very good kind of overall indicator of the regular creative mark um they call them palette knives they're the studio knife set okay and now let's play with the special effects fx ones not sure who named that but it does entertain me all right i know we're going with the blue the bright colors will pop on this all right um so what we'll do first, okay, we, we will kind of use them to stamp and then we'll use them to pull across. I'm going to put um, on here, let's see, there we are. I'm going to put a big swatch of stuff right here just so we can kind of show what those look like if you pull something back out. Oh, this is so satisfying. Smaller ones give you better control. They do um, if you're wanting to do smaller areas, but if you're wanting to cover a lot of space, it's not. It's like these aren't. These are like um, like any tool that you've got, like for your house, right? Some screwdrivers are not meant just because it's a screwdriver doesn't mean it's the right screwdriver for your application. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It may not even fit the right head. It's kind of the same with this, with these kind of tools. Um, some of them can kind of do a lot of things well, and some of them are a little bit more specialty kind of oriented. All right. Like obviously, this is the Mac Daddy for this. All right. Kind so. Of that covers. Mm-hmm. It looks. It look. It looks very lavendery on my screen. I like that. I think it's just my screen but I'm fine with that. All right, so we've got this little thing. This is the number one in the FX effects brushes or uh, painting knives. Now these are all a set. You can't get these individually, so just an FYI. All right, so I'm gonna do, let's see, let's do some orange with this one. So you can lay it down. Some of the, you can lay it down and make almost like a little duck foot kind of with it it's easier to put let me put some on a palette duck feet and kind of have it so I'm not picking up so much from the okay see little duck feet and then you can take it and you can actually I got 
some paint and scrape it through. I'm trying to determine where I am. Okay. Look how pretty that is. It's got those little kind of fingers. The more I push down, the more of that blue you can see. And then I can use that to pull that onto there. So that's got kind of a nice little kind of textured effect that you can make more of an organic shape with or just kind of a nice random pull with even texture. Uh, the number two, it's flat and it's got kind of these little fingers in it. Let's try silver with it. Move these other knives because I'm going to have stuff all over. Okay, so as a knife itself, it'll lay down a little print if you get it on there enough. I apparently did not have it on the whole knife. Almost like a triangle. Or you can pull like this. See how you can kind of see that the fingers in between? Oops, I need to move that up. See, it's almost like picket fence liney. That's something that you can kind of play with, with an underpainting color, with an overpainting, and look for specific textures that you might like. Stuff like, um, because this has this nice straight edge. I'm trying to see where that's at. Because it has that nice straight edge when you push it off, that would be nice for abstract work where you could just kind of take it and Go along there like that. All right. Um, then we've got the, the fun one that everybody likes the most. Uh, let's see. Try to get kind of the excess off of it. Just lighting it up. This is the one everybody jokingly calls the frog foot. Because it makes a little froggy foot. Or squirrel that has a whole lot of toes. It's like the Anne Boleyn of squirreldom. See if you load it real careful, you can get that nice, make it look like it's walking right off. Or you can use it and actually get a really interesting kind of pull down. Or if you zoom back out a little bit, Katie, I'll pull it across the pink. this and that gives you almost like fingers that kind of pull that little bit you can see the pink on the end of the tool pull that across with those little pads okay oh look you, if you just use the tips with the little paint it made those little dots all right then with number four and the number four is kind of got put like that so it's easier to see a larger indentation kind of spaced in between and then smaller ones together so you've got two sides that you can work with it um, let me apply some just smooth paint again and we'll pull it through because I think this one's best Probably easier to see on camera with that kind of the negative being pulled across. Don't you think, Katie? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Okay. I'm starting to have tools everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, so here's the larger side. See what a nice line that can give you? And then the smaller side. I like you could, I mean, you can do anything with these. You don't have to have it. You 
know, it doesn't have to be straight. It can be edged. You can just use the tip on this one to draw across. That gives you kind of a really nice point. Um, then there is the next kind of size up with the number five that gives you a really much wider swath than these. You know, you could do go across. You could put a whole bunch of really heavy duty gel or something on this and then actually push it and make waves where it actually looks like waves. You know, the stuff is pretty endless with what you could do with it. So that one's the number five. Can everybody see those pretty easily? Are they, is it just more ooh, uh, and popcorn time? Uh -huh. Okay. Cause it just seems so quiet other than me with the occasional shing, shing, shing. Um, I like this one because you can use it where you can put down your kind of texture on one side. This is the number six. You can actually apply texture with that on there and it'll kind of squeeze it out in between or it's got a smooth side where you can cut back into it and lift. Boop. Uh-oh, Katie, we're going to need new canvas. I just blopped it. New canvas? I blopped it. Oh. I'm joking. Yeah, I know. I'm more like, look, it took that long to happen. Just wipe it on your apron. It's like it's way over there. Get the character. All right. So that's the number six. Number seven, these ones are really cool. I'm just gonna put a big blob out and then I'm gonna kind of pull through them. Oh, that's blue. Okay, we're gonna do that and we'll make it green. Because guess what, Amy, it's blue. I'm getting so excited, I just wanna use all the colors. All right, so this is the number seven. See how it's got that cool shape? Can take that. Cat made the two big thick lines with it. That's pretty cool. So that kind of gives you that. You can use it to kind of apply color with kind of a neat texture if you want. Then the number eight. And nine are those, but smaller and then even smaller. So I'm going to take the number eight and come over here to the pink. So it gives you that nice shape. Which of those knives might you use for rocks, mountains, or bark, tree bark? You would need to experiment with them and see because it's all in the hand of the person that's actually. She asked it, what would, of these would be good for like rocks and tree bark and all that. The nice thing is the set, it's, it comes as a set. So you're going to get all of them anyway. I mean, you just are going to need to like play and stamp and experiment and kind of see what's going to work best for your needs. My, I might be more heavy handed than the viewer with the same tool and they might be able to get a completely different look out of it. So it's just, it's hard to know without, you know. Okay. So this is the last one, the number nine. Yeah, that's got a smaller that's cool those lines together you can How take it you can smush it the catalyst wedges would fall into this kind of category the catalyst wedges are very similar um what i would say about the catalyst wedges I, and i have them and i've got probably five or six at home and then i've got some of the bigger blades and i do use them with some things is the one thing i found out with some of them those are a better tool to buy when you can feel them because some of them are way softer than you expect when you get them because the ones that I have up until I got a few and then I was like, eh, that's really soft. I ordered online and then before I worked here and then once I went to the retail store, I was like, why did I buy that one? They have these firm ones. So you definitely need to know whether they're going to be firm or not. With these, these are all firm because they're metal, but they have some spring and play to them, right? Some of them, like the orange one that I've got, is like little squishy, squashy silicon fingers that just don't do what you want it to do. And, and then it made me sad. So, um, what other questions do we have? Because we got all the knives out here. 
we're about done with the show. Let's fire them off if anybody needs to see anything or wants to see anything while I've got everything all out here. I will tell you, you have inspired all of the people who bought them and gave up on them to get them back out. That's why you try everything. When we say color swatches, that should not be kept to the realm of paint only. Try your new brushes out when you get them. You know, try these types of things out, play with them. That's where it doesn't hurt to have student grade paint in your house because who cares if you get a canvas out that you maybe have scrapped or that something you didn't like how it turned out, use that to play on. It doesn't have to be thrown in the garbage. It can be kept for experimentation because experimentation sometimes where you teach yourself something new with some tools that you've got can make strides where you go from here at the level you're painting at to over here very quickly just because you took the time to experiment because you teach yourself something different with a different tool that suddenly maybe is kind of that epiphany of, ah, that's where I should have been all along without all that struggling and fighting and, you know, being down on yourself about it and, and unhappy. Playing is as big of a important investment in your artistic kind of journey as actually always doing hard work and it having to look just perfect, regardless of the genre you're doing it in. I know you all do it because we're artists and we second guess ourselves constantly. So get these, th if you've got these things, play with them. Yes. Okay, Frida. Um, what is your personal favorite palette knife for color mixing? For color mixing, it is the, my personal favorite palette knife for color mixing is the 60S. Um, that one and then the 61S are the two that I like that give me like the fastest, quickest color mixing. But I will say that I'm not always really good about mixing with palette knives. I use a brush. Don't do that. Do as Amy says, not as Amy does. Um, if you had to pick your top five out of all of those. Out of all of these. Yeah. Uh, these two. I love the little round one and this one. The, the uh, S60, S61, S, uh, 35T, 36T, <laughs> and I would have this set just for this. Big, the big XL one, just for that big old spatula. You'll uh, put all of them under. Huh? Put all of them under. There you go. So we now, but, that's, but the, keep in mind, that's only for my, my specific interest, because I don't use palette knives to do painting. I use them for weird little twists and turns here and there once in a while, right? Okay, what were you say? I'm sorry. So we all know that you're a bit heavy handed. What? Me? Pfft. Poppy Have you cut. ever had any issues with the collars around the smaller knives breaking? I have never. Okay, if somebody could break something. Yo, what's up? It's me. <laughs> My name is Amy and I break everything. I've never broken a palette knife. Not once. Even with really cheap Chinese junky crap that was you know from from just picking it up at stores or things like that i have never broken a palette knife so i don't think i have either i have cut I myself always, numerous times yeah. all the time but i've never broken a palette knife also we've had a lot of interest in palette knives and how they might work with encaustics or in oil paints with a heavy body medium like say the lucas painting butter yes uh we will do and probably May, we'll do an episode with palette knives and we'll do oils and we'll use some of the alkyd mediums just so you can kind of see what types of kind of texture and weight and things that you can get with it. And also so we can talk about the proper proportional mixing with those because you can like use too much and really screw your painting up. So, so we, I promise we will come back to that. That's already one that we talked about. Um, so we will come back to that definitely um, in another month or two. What are the, Amanda, did you have another question that looked yep. like? No? Okay. Frida, any more? I think we're about done with the questions. You had to caffeinate. Ah, I feel refreshed. All right. Well, awesome. Well, hopefully this has inspired you to get some of those knives out and just play. If you're looking for inexpensive paint, that's a great value that this will go a long, long way. The Soho uh, Acrylics, Urban Artist Acrylic in the jars is kind of your Mac Daddy go-to for that. You saw 
I mean, we have tons left. You saw how much I was slopping out of that pink. And that jar already was only uh, three quarters full. And there's still a bunch in there. If you can hit the overhead so they can see how little we really use. There's still a lot in there. And that was only uh, we've three had quarters that full. Set since day one that we've been using them. Yep. Well, yeah. Well, and they weren't, we didn't open them for mm -hmm. that either. They were just around. So and we liked how the jars looked and then we could grab stuff if we needed it. So, um, so definitely do some experimenting, some playing. Uh, remember that this type of texture can be used on anything, panels, boards, canvas, what have you. Just uh, have some fun with it. Okay. All right, well, if we don't have any other questions, we'll wrap it up. This was JL96. For those of you who may have missed it early on, the, uh, the list of all these products that we showed is on our website, jerrysartorama.com. Type in JL96, and that sheet will pop up that's got all the good stuff. Uh, I love you guys that go after these episodes and go and post stuff that you've tried at home that we've talked about or worked along. You guys are just really awesome. That makes me really feel like like we're making a difference and, and we're, people are having fun and they're getting artistic and that just is, it's like a little feel good right there. So, all right, well, next week, back to the, to the color theory, to our next episode on that. So bring your thinking caps and note taking skills and we'll learn ya, okay? <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Now I just want to paint everything with this. I love that. Do it.